So today we want to talk about uh, IP version 4, addressing IP before addressing. And this is very important. The reason why this is very important is because uh, the world is being run by IP. Those devices, the router switches, laptops, desktop computers, mobile phones, tablets, they cannot work without this is the identification. Okay? This is how we identify them on the network. And so today, we are going to apply the skills we learned in chapter five, uh, number systems. We learned about binary, hexadecimal, and decimal numbering system, isn't it? Yes, we are going to apply so, so much knowledge. That game we have been playing, this is today when we are going to apply it. And so today is a very important uh, day for our learning. So to start us off, to start us off, um, hmm. so today, you can see the objective, the main objective of our study today says to calculate, calculate. So we calculate on our IP before subnetting scheme to efficient segment your network. The ISP gives you one, I, one address or one network address, and you have like up to about 8,000 people in the organization or 500 or 1,000. How do you make sure that each and every computer is assigned a unique IP address and it's not being shared by other computers in the network. That's very, very important. And you can create departments and you also give them small, small networks, you know, within the organization. So subnetting is a very, very important skill. So the first thing we will do is we will study the structure of IP version 4 address. Uh, we look at the two parts of IP version 4 address. We will have the host and the network portion. We'll also learn the first characterization of these addresses. We are, I am aware we have talked about unicast, did we? We talk about multicast and, and broadcast, very good. Then we look at types of IP version 4 addresses, where we look at public addresses. How do they look like? How do we identify them? Private addresses, how do we identify them? And lastly, some are reserved. So out of the 4.3 billion, we have public, we have private, and we have those that are reserved, reserved for special purposes. And then after we do that, then we'll now get into the thick of things. Here, we will start talking about subnetting. We will start, actually start calculating some subnetting stuff. Very interesting. It's one of the most important skills, like I told you guys yesterday, 12 to 15 steps, I reduced it in three steps, just three. And if you get those three steps, we are good to go. We are very, very good to go. Numbers that will be important, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Those numbers are as important as they can ever be. And today, we might be tempted to move slightly a bit, but those ones are the mainstream numbers. So let's um, get started here. So the first thing I want you people to know, and we had mentioned it here, is that the IP version 4 is also called 32 bit address. You know why? Because it has 32 bits, isn't it? How many octets? Four octets, isn't it? Each octet can be written to give us how many bits? Eight, eight bits, isn't it? Yes, each octet can be written to give us eight bits. And so that's why we call it a 32 bit address. Normally, it's made of two portions we have a network portion and a host portion. We have a network portion and a host portion. And uh, looking at the diagram we have at the bottom here, we can actually see that in every address, we will have two portions. The left-hand side, we call it the network portion, and the right-hand side, we call it the host portion. I will show you how to determine the host and network portions in a few. In a few, I will be showing you how to do that differentiation. And here we go. Here we go. I'm just going to show you that right now. But before I do that, there's another type of address. We we yesterday we configured IP version four addresses and also IPv6, isn't it? But we also configured subnet mask. Remember the one for two five five or something. Now that is a very special type of address, and that's why we need to talk about it. What is its function? Why is it that you say IP address one ninety one sixty eight one dot one? Put a space and then you say two five five. The two five five, the two five five to zero. Why we? Why is it important? Very very important. And we are going to ask ourselves: 
Why was it? If you saw in the table yesterday, it was put as slash 24, isn't it? We are going to see how we move from slash 24, 255 to 255 to 256. Maybe you already know. So the work of the standard mask normally is to identify the two portions of the address. Identify the network portion and the host portion of the address. Very, very important. Um, just the same way as an IP address always has four octets. First, second, third octet. Even a subnet mask has four octets. And we match the first octet of the subnet mask with the first octet of the IP. First octet, second octet of the subnet mask with the second octet of the IP. They are marked that we end. I'm going to show you. Now, in mathematics, we have two simple signs. This was we were taught in primary school. Were we taught addition? We are taught subtraction, isn't it? What else were we taught? Division and multiplication. Now, we want to do something that looks like multiplication. The the way we do in multiplication is the same, but the name is different. We call it different in networking, but it is a mathematical operation, just like addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. It works exactly like multiplication. The only difference is that it works with binaries only. Binaries are zeros or, or ones. Zero or one. Those are our binaries. So the process is actually called this one. We call it the adding process. You see capital A and D, isn't it? Then small i and G. So we call it the adding process. It is the process that we use to identify the network and the host portions using the subject mask. So we call it the adding, adding process, adding process. So let's see what happens. This one is going to give us adding process. It's not a very good one, but you're going to find another one here. But basically, let me tell you how the adding process works. Check this out. If you multiply one times one, what do you get? One. One times zero? Zero. Uh, zero times zero? Zero. Which means the only time you get a one is you multiply one by one? One by one. And that is how the adding process works. Whereby a one and a one, if you take one, you add it with one, you get a one. But one, and zero get zero. Zero and one you get zero. Zero and zero, you also get a zero a zero. So the only time you get a one is when you and one and a one, just like when you mark a one times one, you get zero. Now let me start first by explaining how does the subnet mask help us to separate the network portion of the IP from the host portion. Now checking at the diagram we have on the a board here, whereby the address is the upper one at 192.168.10.0. That is our IP address. Okay. We want to use the subnet mask, which is 255. 255. You know, I have the background of teaching. We teaching use pointer. This is not forbidding you. Okay. Yes. I'm from a very strong teaching background. So this is our IP, and this is our subnet mask, which is 255.255.255.0. The IP is 192.168.10.10. Now, we want to borrow from chapter five. Changing decimal by We have 192. No, 192. It's 128 plus 64, isn't it? And we'll get 192, and the rest will be zeros, isn't it? And that's why we have the binary here for 192. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If you are not in that class, please visit chapter 5. The links were already set in the group by Moses. 168 will be, this will be 128 plus 32 plus 8. Okay? Yes. And like I, I had mentioned, those numbers, don't forget them. 1, 2, 4, 8, 64. No. 128, 16, 32, 64, and 128. When I look at <laughs> when I look at the first one on 192, for me I don't see the one. I see 128. When I look at the second one, I see 64. Isn't it? When I look at the one for 168, the first one I see 128. I skip the zero, which means I'm skipping 64, isn't it? 
I go to 32. I skip 16, and the next one is 8, isn't it? So if I add 128 plus 32 plus 8, I get 168, isn't it? Good. When I look at the 10, the third one, which is not 196, not 10. So the first 10 is actually, I skip 128, 64, 32, 16, I go to 8. I skip 4, I go to 2. So 8 plus 2 is what gives me 10, isn't it? And that is the same thing on the last one there. Then we also mentioned that if you add 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus uh, 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. We added it here in the chorus, isn't it? What did we get? We get 255. If you add all of them, we get 255. Okay? That means if I'm given 255, that's how I know it will be all the ones will be 255. If I have eight ones, that is equal to 255, 255. If I have another 255, that will be how many ones? Eight ones. If I have another 255, that's going to be eight ones. Then if I have zero only, it means there are eight zero, eight zero, isn't it? Yeah. So 255, the 255, the 255 is eight zeros, eight zeros, eight zeros. Sorry, eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, and the eight zeros at the end then, by the way, by the way. All submit masks. Okay. You will never find a zero in between the ones. And you never have a one in between the zero, zeros. Subnet masks, it is always continuous ones. Where the ones end, the rest will be zeros. You'll never find a one in between them. That is subnet mask. Okay. Yes, and that's how it is. And that's how all subnet masks will always be 255, the 255. 255. The last number, trust me, the last number will always be, you know, when you are adding 128 plus 64 was 192. 192 plus 32, 224. 224 plus 16, 240. 240 plus 8, 248. 248 plus 4, 252. 252 plus 2, 254. 254 plus 1. Those numbers. 128, 224. No, 128, 192, 224, 244, 248, 255. 128, 192, 224, 248, 252, 254, 255. Guess what? A subnet must be always end with one of those numbers. Of course, and zero. Some of them like 255, 255, 255, 0, isn't it? So the last number, the last number which can always be at the fourth octet or it can be at the third octet, it will always end with either zero or 128 or 224 or 240 or 248 or 252 or 254, rarely do you find one that ends with 255. It's very rare. In fact, it is not there. Okay? Yeah. So listen to this. Check this out before I forget. How has this subnet mask help us to know the two portions of this IP? You write your IP address in binary like this. You also write your subnet mask in binary. Okay? And then you look at the subnet mask and you put them uh, matching each other. So that the first octet and the first octet, second octet, second octet, third octet, and the fourth octet, fourth octet, okay? Then, Angalia Mali, the last bit one, or one bit of the subnet mask, where the ones are ending on the subnet mask, yeah? You draw a straight line up, crossing even onto the subnet mask. Then, that line, when you draw it up, now the left-hand side of the IP is going to be the network portion. And the right hand side is going to be the post push. That's how we determine the post and network push. You can only do that with the subnet mask. Okay? Write both in binary and draw that straight line. Where the one, the last one, the ones are ending, draw a line upwards. And so the left side of the IP will be network portion. And the right side of the network will be the network portion. That means something. If I forget, I have never taught this in a class. It also means because it's going to come very soon, soon, like today. It also means that on the subnet mask, we can also say that the network portion on the subnet mask is made of ones only, isn't it? And the host portion of the subnet mask is made of zeros. That is very true. On the subnet mask, 
the network should in a one spec yard, and the host portion equal a zero spec yard, always. So, yeah. Now, be asking me questions in case you have them. Uh, huh. Now, check this out. This is very, very important. And I'm going to ask a question that we saw yesterday and I asked it today. Now, I'm going to show you the subnet masks now. There are several, in fact, this is not all of them, but I'm going to show you how to determine the others, okay? Now, the subnet mask can be expressed in three ways. Can be expressed in three ways. And um, checking at this table that we have here, you can express your subnet mask in three ways. Yesterday, yesterday, we saw slash 20, Four, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yesterday we saw slash twenty-four here, and we the one we configured was two five five two five five two five five zero, isn't it? Yes. And so this is now the this is how we this is the subnet mask. You know, like when you say subnet mask, someone sees the decimal uh, notation there. Okay, but the subnet mask can also be written in what is called prefix length. But you can also call it a slash notation. We call it slash notation because we use the slash here. Okay. Yesterday we saw slash 24, isn't it? We saw slash 24, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And we converted it to 255255. Now, when you see slash 24, it means that subject mask has 24 ones. And the rest are zeros. Are we together? Yes. When you see slash 24, it means that the subject mask has how many ones? 24 ones, and the rest are seen zeros. But you know that each octet can only have up to how many bits? Eight, eight. isn't it? Eight. So which means fill the first octet with eight, fill the second with eight, fill the third with eight, okay? So eight, 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 how many are those? 24, isn't it? Fill the rest with C, zeros, and you have your submit. And you know that if, if the ones are eight, it means that that one is what? What is that in decimal? Five, five. Should be two five five. Is it? Let me just get you know share here. Yeah. If the ones are eight, if you have eight ones like this, so anyway. If you have eight ones, like uh, what we can see on the column for slash 24, which means there are 24 ones, we said today that eight ones in decimal is 255, isn't it? Because that is 128 plus, plus 64 plus the 2 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, isn't it? Yes, that's what we said yesterday. So let's look at 25. Can you see 25? Okay, now when you have 25, 25 means that we are having 25 ones. Well, the first octet is full of eight, the second octet is eight, the third octet is also eight. That is 24, isn't it? And then we have one more put on the fourth octet, isn't it? This one represents which number? Yeah, it represents 128, isn't it? Yes, and that is the other number I don't want you to forget. We said the first, each of these, each octet, the first bit represents 128, the second bit is 64, the third bit is 32, the fourth bit is uh, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Okay? That is something you should not forget. And those ones, you should have them at your fingertips. The first one from the left, this is 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, Four, two, one. The same thing with the second octet. 128, 64, 32, 8, no, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. And this one here also represents 128. That's why this one will be 255 dot what? Dot 255 dot 255 dot what? Dot 128, isn't it? That is slash 25. Look at slash 26. Slash 26 means there are how many ones? 
26 one, isn't it? So eight here, eight here, eight here, that is 24. Plus how many more? Two more to make it slash 26, isn't it? And so you get here, 255, 255, 255. Then we need to add 128 plus what? Plus 64, what do you get? That's how we get dot 192 here. Look at slash 27, which means that 27 ones, first octet is full, second octet is full, third octet is full with the 24 that is. We need how many more? Three more to make it 27, isn't it? And so we, we need to add 128 plus 64 plus 32, which is what? To 24. Slash 28 is the same thing. Eight full, eight, eight here. That is 24 plus four more to make it 28. And so if you add 128 plus 64, 192 plus 32 to 24 plus 16 is 2, 240, okay? Slash 29, it means we are having 24 plus 5 plus no, plus what? Plus five, yes. So that's 128 plus 64, that, uh, what, two, uh, 192, plus that 2 to 24, plus 16 to 40, plus 8 is 2 to 48. Slash 30 here, yeah. which means there are 30 ones. 8, 8, 8, that is 24, plus 6 to get it, to make it slash 30. And this is 192 plus uh, 224, uh, 240, 248. 252, by the way, slash 30 is the last subnet mask. Even though the total number of bits in IPv4 is 32, you will never have a subnet mask that is beyond slash 30. Slash 30 is the last one. Okay? But, Ukoju, can you see slash 24? Which number comes before 24? 20? 23, isn't it? Those sides you can have, by the way, up to slash seven. So you can have 23, 22, slash, and you're going to meet those subnet masks. Slash 20, slash 18, slash 19, slash 17, until you get to slash, slash 16. Then we have slash 15. Slash eight. You you can also find it, but it's very rare. Okay. But what I want you to note is how do you handle when I give you slash uh, 15? Do you know there are 15 ones and fill the rest with zeros? Okay. And can you write into decimal? Because in most cases, by the way, they will always give you subnet mask in slash notation, but they want you to change it to decimal. So do you have the ability to change? For example, let me let me test you here a bit. I want you to find out for me, slash 23, what is the subnet mask in decimal? In pen and paper, and there's a lot of writing. I don't know whether I've told you to come with your writing materials. There's so much writing here. If you don't have pen and paper, you're gonna have to borrow from your neighbor. There's so much, so much writing here. So much writing to be done. In fact, today is the mother day of writing. Today is the D day for writing, yeah. Hey, he's looking at you as if he needs. You have a pen. You have two pens. You have only one. You can break it into two. And <laughs> you, you, you need to have a pen. Because who has two pens, man? You, you're going to have to help this guy. You have another one. You take us. You don't have. You have to provide this guy with a pen. Because if you don't, one day you wake up and you close the book. You know, it's the group that we Yes. 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 So, um, so the subnet master. So I'm saying slash twenty three. Okay. Yes. Uh, slash twenty three. Uh, I want it to be so. Write it in binary first, and that's for everyone, even those who are online. Write it to binary, and then get for me the decimal. 
there, two five five or something. Slash twenty three. Let's do that very really fast. I think it's two five five or two five five. I will come to see. Yeah, I don't want people to hear the answer. Yes. If I tell you something more, uh, then we continue. Let me see. There, that's the one. Right. Anyone? Yeah. Is okay. Anyone else? The last person, really? Those have I seen, yes? Anyone can do still here, I see you. Yeah, it's very good. Yes, it's very good. I want to really know how to convert this man and talk to you. You see? Okay. Okay. It's good. I want to see you guys. There's something there. So now this one. This is the right one. We will save this as a lens of the last one. And it's also in the island now. Yes, so I'm there is only the island. It's on the chair because of the glass. It's only for the last one. You know, the last one will fit. The second one is 64. The next one. That's it. The next one. Four. The next one. Eight. Four. But the one is zero. Then to add this one, one to eight plus six four plus eight. No, one to eight plus six four plus thirty two plus six three plus eight plus four plus two. This one will also add. Next, the last one there is zero. Can you do that? Good. Now, so subject mask very important. Okay. In most cases, they will give you in form of slash something. So you need how to change it to uh, binary, and then you change it to. Something like that. Anyway, anyway, let's let's get going. Let's get going. We are going to get into it. now. Listen, listen to this. Listen, everyone. Listen, to everyone. Um, when you see slash thirty, okay, like it is always synonymous. Like every time someone tells me slash thirty, I always know it is a subnet mask that end with two fifty two. Like I want it to. It is synonymous. Like. I know slash that is a subnet mask that ends with 252. If you tell me slash 29, I know it's a subnet mask that ends with the 248. If you tell me slash 28, it ends with 240. If you tell me slash 27, I know it's ending with 224. If you tell me slash 26, I know it's ending with 192. Slash 25 ends with 128. And that is going to help you so, so much. Especially these ones, I need you to have them at your fingertips. Okay? Yes. If you see slash 8, for example, it means only the first octet is full. It is 255 to 0.0.0. Slash 16, 255, 255 to 0.0 to 0. Slash 24, 255, 255, 255 to 0. Okay? Yes. But I want you to know, okay, it's ending with 252. Slash 29, 248. Slash 28, 240. Slash 27, 224. And can you see the format there? Zero. 128, 192, 224, 240, 248, 252. You know, do you, do you remember that? Isn't it? During our audition. So 
our subject more. So I want you to, it's with the practice, with the time, you're going to have to master uh, so that you just do slash 27, you can pay one. Ah, you need 224. Slash 25, now you need one, 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 you need so that's that. So, so, yes. There's something I want to ask everybody that I used to forget. Okay. Please, it's out of this one, but keep it in the center. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. They assign me that you do my deep pass. Yes. I see that anything to the final exam. They assign me that I give you. Yeah. No, they don't have anything to the final exam. Okay. But they, but they, like today, remember when I told you to do, I gave you the first cut for chapter one to four, isn't it? Is it chapter one to four, one to three? It was one to three, isn't it? Yes, and today I'm going to give you others. And I said that uh, you can do them more than once, isn't it? You don't like what you score in the first attempt, you can take the second or even the third attempt, okay? Yes, what's the question? I see that I added anything to the final exam. That's what I added. Which one? The answer that normally gives. No, the ones that add something to the final exam is now the, the chapter exams. Like the one for chapter one to three, chapter four to seven. Eight to ten. I'll show them to you today. Yeah, because when I give you all the one that that something to the exam, yeah, you have to you have to make us clear that this one is supposed to be so. Yeah, but the assignments that I always give you, there's a point that they'll add something to the exam because there's a a column where I give marks to each and every person on your participation in class. I give marks on your when you do my assignments, so I get and I give a I just I give a uh award marks for everyone. According to you know everything now. And also, how will exams be stable? Exams. Yes. How are they doing exams? First? How do they? Exams. Uh, the exams. Yes. Oh, so okay. for the chapter exams, those are our cards. They are takeaway cards. You do them at home. The final exam. Not the final the exam. End of the model, actually. No, that one we will do it here. I will see. I will see that. You will come here that day, normal time, five thirty. Everyone sits in front of. The computer here, I activate it, and people start doing their exam. And the account? Yeah, from the account. But I'll unlock it first. For the chapter exams, I already unlocked them today. Okay? In fact, I've opened all of them from chapter one to chapter 17, but they're in groups. One exam for chapter one to three is one exam. For chapter four to seven, one exam. Chapter eight to 10, one exam. I think 11 to 13, one exam. And then the last for chapter 15 to 17. Okay. They're in your accounts. I've already opened them. I don't want to limit you. Those ones you do at your own time at home. So long as the day when we are doing the final exam, you've already completed all of them. And you have multiple attempts to work on this. Sorry? No, once you do it and you click submit inside the account, I will now see the marks on my side. Yes. Anyway, anyway, let's continue, guys. I mean, we don't have so much time. So this is the ending process I was actually talking to you people about. So check the ending process in action. So like I said, in the ending process, if you add one and one, you get a what? A one. Zero and one? Zero. One and zero? Zero and zero is also zero, isn't it? Well, one actually means true. And zero means false. We use this so much in programming. So that a true and a true is a true. A true and a false is a false. False and a false is a false. False and true is false. The only time you get true is when you have true and true, when you have one and one. So, so how do they do it? And by the way, this is, and they'll ask you, we use the ending process, apart from getting uh, the network portion, the host portion, we use it. If someone gives you an IP address, 192.168.1.1, and 192.168.1.2, and 1.3, 1.4, and someone is asking you, this is the IP address, and this is the subnet mask. Can you use those two with the ending process to calculate the network address? The network address normally is the one that ends with zero. You saw the other day, 192.168.10.0, isn't it? But then we have dot one, ten dot one, ten dot two, ten dot three. The network address is like the mother of all the addresses. All IP addresses in the same network, they only have one common network address, 
address, okay? If you are given an IP address and a socket mask, you can easily calculate the network address. And so how do you do that? Very easy. Using the ANDing process, using the ANDing process, check this out. So what do you do? You're given an IP up there, 192.168.10.10, isn't it? So you need to write each of them into binary. So 192 in binary will be 110000 like that. 168 will be the binary here. 10 is the binary here. And 10 is also having the binary here. Then your subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Again, write each of them into binary. So 255 is eight ones. 255 is eight ones. 255 is eight ones. Zero is eight zeros. Okay. Then what do you do? Very simple. You are going to add bit by bit, corresponding bit by bit. So the first bit on the IP and the first bit on the subnet mask. So what is one and a one? One. One, one and a one? One. Zero and a one? Zero. So whatever you use, there's zero. a zero. Obviously, you obtain zeros, isn't it? Yes. If all the these ones are zeros, even if there's a one here, we are still going to get a what? Zeros. Cindy, because every time yeah. you have a, the only time you have, the only time you have one is when there's one and one, isn't it? But wherever there's a zero and a one or one and a zero, you will obviously get a zero, isn't it? And that's why if you see, these are six zeros here. We also expect to have what? How many zeros here? Six. If we say here, there's one and a one, we get a one here. But zero and a one, you get a zero. But one and a one, you get a one. And you do all through. And when you see here, look at this, all of them are zeros. What do you expect to have here? Zero, season. Once you've done the ending process and you have your answer in bits here, you now change this one into de into decimal. So one one zero 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 is gonna be what? One ninety two. This one is going to be one sixty eight, and this one is going to be ten. But this one is going to be z zeros. So the network address therefore is one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot z zeros. That is the network address where this IP falls into. You're going to be asked, given an IP address, this one, subnet mask, this one, use the ending process to calculate the network address. Now you know. Is it hard to do? So the only skills you need to know, you need to know how to convert your decimals to binary and binary back to the decimals. That is chapter five. Please go and watch that recording. It's all there. It's all there. Yeah. All right. Having done that, and I'll give you some assignments, of course, to also do that. Ah, all right. I want to skip this slide very deliberately because it's talk about network addresses, post addresses, and broadcast addresses, and I'm gonna show you where that comes in. Without much ado, let's talk about this very quickly. Unicasts, one to one, one to one. Multicast, one to many or one to a group, isn't it? Broadcast, one to all, isn't it? And that has not changed even in IP. Unicast is from one PC to the printer, one device to one device, okay? Broadcast is from one to all, to all of them. One device is sending to all the devices. And then for multicast, it's one to some. If you look at this point here, this PC did not receive it, and this one did not receive it, and this one did not receive it. So it came from here, and it only went to these two devices, one to a group or one to many, and it's not one to all. Sour? Yes. Many people does not mean all people, isn't it? If you say there were many people at the park, it does not mean there were all people at the park because all people in the world were not at the park, isn't it? There must have been many, but maybe they were just from Nairobi. Maybe they're just from some part of Nairobi. Guys, this part is important, types of addresses. And this is where we start to build some concept here, very, very important concept. And the first thing to learn is that we are going to talk about a private address and a public IP address. Very, very important. Now, because the private IPs are lesser than the public IPs, how many people are we in class here right now? This is uh, five plus two is what? Seven, isn't it? If I say the total number of people in class here is seven, and there's only one lady, can we know the number of men now or gentlemen? 
We can, isn't it? How many will they be? Six. So if we know the minority, we can help us to know the majority. That's the principle we apply here. If we can know how to identify private IPs, then anything that is not a private IP will be a public IP. And so because of that, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look uh, this here. And before I do that, let me start by talking about the public IP. Public IP addresses are the addresses that can be used to route traffic to the internet. Private IPs, they are not allowed anywhere in the internet. In fact, private IPs, they are not allowed beyond the land. Like they cannot go beyond the default gateway. You get that? Yes. When you have to connect to the internet now, you have to visit youtube.com, google.com, facebook.com, web.whatsapp.com. Now, for you to see those messages trickling in into your Facebook or your WhatsApp, it means your network or your device is having the services of a public IP. Without public IP addresses, you cannot connect to the internet. You can't. Because private IP addresses are not allowed in the internet. And now the internet, the, the internet basically is a short form for interconnection of networks. Okay? If I, we can connect our KU network with eCitizen.com network. You know, eCitizen is not in our network here. You know that? eCitizen, which is a government platform, it's actually being hosted on government servers. And by the way, they are maintained by Safari Pro. So for us to connect from Kenyatta University City Campus Network to the eCitizen.geo.ke network, we need to be linked up. We need to have interconnection of networks. We need to interconnect our KU network with the network for the eCitizen, with geo.ke. And we need someone who is called an internet service provider, ISP, to link our network with them. And for our case, we have two ISPs here. We have Liquid Telecom, which is an ISP, and we also have Safaricom, who is another ISP. They are the ones that are, we are paying we subscribe by paying for their services to link our network with the Google eCitizen, link it with WhatsApp network, link it with the Facebook network, link it to the X network, link it with all those websites you visit. Our network and their network, the ISP. And the only IPs that can do that is the public IP. Within here, currently we use private IPs. And so how do we know we use private IPs? Let's check this out. All right, all right. So, um, so this is how we know we use private IPs. We use private IPs because these ones are our three private IP ranges. And so I start. Whenever you see any address, that starts with 10 to 0 to 0 to 0. Okay. So the first octet must be 10. The second octet, third octet, fourth octet. They can take any value from 0 up to 255. I want you to note that very seriously. The first octet must be 10. It doesn't matter what is in the second, third, and fourth octet. So long as that IP starts with 10, it qualifies to be a private IP address. Oh, yes. It can be 10.1.5.10 or 10.1.5.250.7. The last three octets can take any value because every octet can only range from 0 to 255. There's no 256. There's no less than one. There's no negatives. Okay? Yes. So any number that starts with the 10, we don't care what is in the second, third, and fourth octet. That is the first group of the private IP addresses. So, next, 172. So the first octet must be 172. Now, this is where the problem is, the second octet. Second octet, 
can only start from 16, 16. And it can go up to, so that's means, where they'll catch you. Which means, like if you say 172 dot, you can even put dot, dot 31. Yes, so you can say 172 dot 16, 172 dot 17, 172 dot 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 31. So when you see 172 dot the second octet can only start from 16 to 31. So that means when you see 172 dot 15, that is not a private, that is a public. Okay? 172 dot 32, that is a public. 172 dot 14 is public. But 172 dot 16, 172 dot 28, 172.30, So up and Yoshida Iko, this is where we have problems. The second octet. It's up from don't see 172.1 and you see this is a private IP. No. If you see 172, you must counter check that it is from 16 to 31. Okay? Yes. So the problem is only at the second octet. But on the third and fourth octet, it can be from 0 to 55. Are we together? So yes, is is a IP address mm. like ten zero zero. Mm. This ones they are all they are all actually the private. Private. These are private. Now, uh, Alan, it, just Alan. a minute. Just a minute. Okay. Someone is asking, and then I'm gonna give you a chance. If if I configure the first IP address which is ten zero zero in this in this PC, yes, then the other PC I configure the one which is one seven two sixteen or two mm -hmm. Can they ping each other? They cannot ping each other. They cannot ping each other. Yeah, those are they must be these ones must be on the same network. But you can also put them on the different networks. If one of them is given another ISP and another another ISP, so that can connect the one seven two, because we say they must have the same network address. Okay, if you can clear the tent of something. Their network address is going to be 10 to 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? That is shared by all of them. That means devices on the same network, they must have the same trend. If they are 10 or something, they must be 10 or something. If all of us, we check the IP address of this, all these devices, they are going to be 10 or something. All of them. You get that? But we are coming there. Okay. We're coming there. We have an idea. Uh, Kimani, please. Uh, okay, unmute and ask. I want to just clarify something regarding subnet maskers. Subnet masks. All right. Okay. When you're defining us, do you define a subnet mask so that you can de you can define the number of potential uh, sub IPs, for example, okay. in the router? Is it okay. something you define to, to prevent the number of users, uh, the number of end users from becoming sprawling? That is the next. That is the next thing we want to learn. Oh, so is that what subnetting is used for? So let's say I have a router. Exactly. A router yes. And I want to I want to limit the number of potential end users. Is that when yes. I define the subnet mask? Exactly. That is what it's determined by the subnet mask. And that is the part of this class that is called subnetting. Subdividing a network address. And the subnet mask is very important for it. But we are going to talk about it. Just give me a few. All right. So let's finish up this part. So have you seen the second category of private addresses? Once eh? we read to 16 or uh, 0 to 0, uh, the second octet can only range from 16 to 31. The third and the fourth octet can start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 55. All right. The third category is very clear, just like in the first one. The third category must start with 192, 168. That one does not change. Okay. If you see any address that starts with 192.168, the third and fourth octet can take any number from 0 to 255. Sour? Yes. So the only problem we meet is at the second one. That's okay, isn't it? Yes. Let's 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 continue. Let's continue. Yes, 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 yes. 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 That's okay. That's okay. Now, if I say we say 10. Mm. To the one. Mm. That was something. This is why it becomes a public, right? No. So, you see the third of that. When I say oh, about the third of that. Okay, let me say, say 10, 10. Any 10. number, any number you put, it will still be private. 
where there are zeros. See where there are zeros there? Yeah. You put any number on them. Unless this one, like you say, if I say 172.50. That is now public. Huh? Yes. yes. But that kind of something, if you have nine dot something, what is that? That's now public. Okay. It must strictly start with 10. The other one must strictly start with 172, 16 to 31. And the third one must strictly start with 168. Those ones are private. Now listen to this. Anything that is out of this range is a public IP. Okay? Except some few special ones that we are going, I'm going to tell you right now. So anything that's out of these ranges, that is now called public. Like there's an IP that gives you 209.165. That is a public IP. Now, yes, so it is easier to know the private ones, and then you can remove the chaff, the chaff from the from the weeds or from the plants. Eh? Yes, if you know these ones, then you also know the public. All right, let's um, pick this out now. So just uh, moving on swiftly, the public IPs they were the biggest part of the 4.3 billion. We already used all of it. Right now, like I was telling you in this KU, do you know that as a university, this campus, we only have one public IP, only one. We are sharing it with the private ones. So the private ones, it's the border of this network. They translate all your IPs, that one public IP. And that is help thanks to this guy called NAT, Network Address Translation, that we will study. There's a whole chapter in CCNA2 for NAT. Actually, it's CCNA3, I think. We'll study NAT, okay? And that time will come. But this one has been very important to help us. Uh -huh. Special types of addresses, they are actually reserved addresses. Any address that begins with 127, okay? 127, .0 .0 .0, all the way to 127, .255, .255, .255. So the 127 is called a loopback address. It's a special type of address. It's called a loopback address. You actually use it if you want to test that your IP, your PC is well configured with the IP. You just go to the CMD and ping the common one is 127.0.0.1. If you ping that IP, it's like you are pinging the PC itself. So you use it. If you get reply, 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 that shows you that your PC has been well configured with the IP addresses. That's why we say it is used on a host to test if TCP IP is operational. Basically, if the IP addresses configured are operational. So another special category is called link local. Link local addresses. This is a very interesting one. The link local is very interesting. It begins with 169. Let me explain to you why link local is, is special. And this is a problem you'll be solving so long as you're in this industry. Some of your clients are going to have their IPs, I mean their PCs or their machines or their phones or their tablets. Your network is using a DHP server, which is supposed to assign IP addresses automatically. Okay. If your machine fails to connect to the DHP server, your machine assigns itself an IP. But the IP it assigns itself will be starting with 169. And they'll ask you this in the exam. That a device was powered on. And there was a DHCP server in the network, and the device acquired an IP address beginning with 169. But because 169 is also considered as a private IP address, in fact, it is always called a PIPA. A PIPA. A PIPA automatic private IP addressing. And they tell you the device assigned itself an IP beginning with 169, but something, and it was not able to access the internet. So if a device acquires an IP of one beginning with 169, the 255, the 254 or something, it means it did not locate the DHP sub. So it gives itself an IP. OK? Yes. So that's very, very important. You go to the CMD, you say IP config space forward slash all. Look at the IP that has been given. Is it starting 169? Pass. DHP server was not located, or it did not find the DHP server, or the DHP server had given all the IPs that it had, and so it could not locate one. So it gives itself, but it gives itself a private one, which cannot be used to acquire to, to connect to the internet. So, yeah, it's dynamic host configuration protocol. Dynamic host configuration protocol. We have a whole chapter for DHCP, okay, in CCNA2. 
CCNA2 has very interesting things. It is a protocol that enables these machines. Every time you come here and you power on that machine, that machine begins to communicate with our DHP server in KU. Do you know it is in main campus? But within the past 15 seconds, your PC has already communicated with the DHP server in main campus and that it has acquired all the IP addresses there. Okay? It's a very important. If you didn't have DHP servers, you'll have to be assigning the addresses manually. That is not a very interesting thing. In a few steps, I'm going to change track a bit. You need to know these ones. Classes of IP addresses. We have class A up to class E. Okay? So class A, and the only thing I need you to master here is one. I don't want you to master those ranges. So I don't want you to master the ranges. And we are only going to talk about the first three classes, class A, B, and C. So check class A, slash, slash A, isn't it? Which subnet mask is that in decimal? In decimal. Yes, slash eight is which subnet mask in decimal? Today you are the ones who gave me subnet. You are writing for me subnet mask. Two five five. Zero zero to zero to zero. Isn't it? Very good. So class A is having slash eight, which is two five five to zero to zero to zero. Look at class B slash. 16, subnet mask in decimal, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, 255, That's all I'm going to need you to remember for now. Because I'm going to ask you, they are going to tell us that this company has bought a network address from the ISP. And they have been given a class C subnet mask, subnet it. So you must remember what is class A subnet mask, what is class B subnet mask, what is class C. So, yes. Class D and E, those ones were, they are reserved. Reserved for two things. One is for experimentation, experiments. Like we use them so much when you're doing our studies. They're also for the other military. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The military service. You know. You know. No government will tell you that. But they know it. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So for these ones, please just know for me, class A, class B, class C subnet mask. So I want you to look at this pie chart here. You see the pie chart there? That pie chart is very, very important. Let me see if I can generate a bigger pie chart. Bigger pie chart here. All right, all right. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if I can get a bigger pie chart. Okay, I'll give you. I'll give you some small quiz on eleven three three. Sawa, you know what it will be doing. Check, check this out. Oh my God, it's not displaying anything there. I need to say project. And I say duplicate it. And if you see the, my screen now, check this out. This is a very small game which that will earn you five points. Okay? Check this. Private addresses are not allowed to go to the internet. So, but public addresses are allowed. So, so this, you're going to tell me whether the IP is going to pass or block. Are you ready? So you're going to check whether it's private or public. So, yes. <laughs> private cannot, yeah, it's not allowed. It's only, it cannot be used within the network. Private are not allowed in the network. They are only allowed within the private land. Okay. Public, they can go to the public internet. So, oh, yeah. you're going to tell me whether to pass or block. Are you ready? Good. Uh, let's go. I'm going to start. Pass or block? Block. <laughs> okay, pass or block? Pass. <laughs> Negative. <laughs> pass or block? Pass. Good. Good. <laughs> Let's go. Pass or block? Pass. Pass. Good. Uh -huh. Pass or block? 
Pass. Pass. Good. Pass or block? <laughs> Good. Pass or block? Good. Pass or block? Uh, good. Thanks, pass or block? Uh -huh. The last one? The last one? I just started here. And reset it. Pass or block, guys? Pass. Good. The last one, the very last one. Pass or block? Uh, you people are smart now. Now I'm sure. I am very sure now. You know what uh, private and public IPs are. Cisco have put all these things just to enhance your learning. Okay? Yeah. It's in a game like so the binary game. Okay? It's a game, but it's an academic game. That's how I call it. Just to be able to let you to learn. I wanted you to watch it is to look at this one here. Yeah. These are the classes, yeah? Class A, B, C, D. Now, check out, check, check. Class A, class A, I can zoom it if I want to. Yes, that's a bit clear now. Class, let's start with the class C. Class C has a total of how many host, IP, I, host addresses? 54, isn't it? Yes, 254, which means if you are starting a small company, and the company has 254 people and below. Less than 254. Less or equal to 254. Okay? You will go to the ISP and you go for class class C. If your company has over 254, all the way to 65,534, that range, you cannot go for class A. Okay? Because the number of people in your company, which is equal to the number of devices, you now go for class that will accommodate you from 255 all the way to 65,000. If your company has more than 65,534, which means 65,535 onwards, you now go for class A, because class A will give you 16 million, 16 million addresses, 777 to 214. Okay? So depending on how many people you have in your organization, you go for those classes. So, because depending on the class, will accommodate your company. And if you look at the pie chart, class A has 50% of all the addresses. Can you see that? Yes, class A has 50%. Class B has 25% of the total. Okay? Class C has 12.5%. And then class D and E, they share the remaining 12.5%. That is a total number of 4.3 billion addresses, which we have already exhausted. The only 4.3 billion number of people in the planet is hitting 8 billion people, okay? Now, because of the number of people have been more, we want to study what has been happening. How have you been surviving? One of the ways we have been surviving is the ISP realized it only has one or two addresses. Ten companies need the addresses. What do they do? They slice that address to be enough for people that are here. They do subnetting, subnet, sub, subdivide, net is network. To subdivide a network. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have bread, okay, and you cut it into slices, those slices, are they still bread or they become something else? They're still bread, isn't it? So slices of bread are bread, isn't it? Very good. The same way, subdivisions of a network address are still net networks. In fact, in fact we call it subnet. A subnet, subnet, subnet. We have one network divided into small pieces. And we now call it subnet. Sub is subdivision, net is network. So subdivision of a net, network, which is still network. Now, so check, check, check this out. <coughs> now, um, there's an organization we did talk about in our first, second lesson. We call it IAN, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. That's IANA is the organization that is in charge of overseeing the
the distribution of IP addresses, subnet masks, uh, domain names, IPv4 and IPv6, including MAC addresses. Okay. And when the IANA gives addresses, IANA does not give to our ISPs directly. IANA gives to what is called regional internet registries, which are for each and every continent. Okay. And so checking at these continents here, I want to display a, a better or a bigger size so that everyone can see. Checking here, can you see the, how do we call the regional internet registry for Africa? We call it AFRINIC, isn't it? Yes, AFRINIC is the regional internet registry for Africa. All African countries, all the ISPs, internet service providers in Africa, they get their IPv4 blocks, IPv6 from AFRINIC. And someone will ask me, where, where is the headquarter of AFRINIC? The headquarter of AFRINIC is in Mauritius. Mauritius is one of the African countries, isn't it? It's actually a very small island country. You can always check in Google or Google Map, wherever that is, okay? You've heard of that country, isn't it? So Mauritius is the, where AFRINIC is headquartered. So all ISPs get, it, get their addresses, address blocks from Mauritius. And by the way, even ISPs are divided into tires. We have tire one ISP, which is a bigger ISP, tire two, tire three. Tire one, they want to partner directly from the, from Afrini. Tire two, they get from tire one. Tire three, get from tire two. Like Safaricom, I think it's a tire, tire two and tire three. It's also move, no, it's tire two and tire three, yes. So Safaricom gets from another ISP before they can now provide to end users, but they also provide to other, uh, to organizations like KU, okay? Otherwise, we have other, other regional internet registries. We call them RIRs. The one for North America is called ARI, isn't it? And the one for South America, LACNIC, isn't it? The one for Europe, um, uh, Europe, the United Kingdom is called RIPE, okay? Of course, they have those words in full in your notes. The one for the Asian and the Middle East and Australia is called APNIC, APNIC, okay? Yes, so those are the, there are how many? There are five, isn't it? That take care of all the continents of the world in order to make sure that this uniformity in terms of uh, signing, but it's one of our interests is AFRINIC, okay? Yes. You can read more about AFRINIC on Google. So moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we, I now want to change tracks. Uh, the next slides is my own one, okay? When I used to use the, the notes from the account, they were very difficult for people to follow, okay? I have a very strong mathematics background at both uh, undergraduate and, and, and postgraduate. And so I came up with uh, uh, my own work and this is patented to be, and most of them will be in my own handwriting, okay? Yes, so that uh, no one copies them, says they are theirs, and I've not published them yet. So that's why I'm going to change slides. It's, uh, I don't have the best of handwriting, but our teacher used to say, you know, that handwritings don't matter. What matters is the content of the handwriting, and so I adopted that. So uh, I'm now going to change and use a different side, but I want you to mostly, I want you to note what is here. I call this subnetting made easier than ever before in just three steps, just three steps. I will try and make it much simpler. And I've been revising these steps and there are only three steps. And um, in fact, the step number one, I've actually revised it. Don't take the upper one, take the one that has been typed, okay? Yes, so these are the three steps that we are going to do, which is used to do subnetting. And uh, they're actually right here. I did write them here. And um, I can zoom this in if you want me to. So right now, what I want you to do, I want you to note these steps down. Okay, if you have a where to write, write them down, but skip some small space. After the first step, skip, go to the second step. After the second step, go to the third step. The third step is the last step. 
In the north, they are between 12 to 15 steps, which was too much for people to follow. This is the most difficult chapter in networking, and it's the one I have made the simplest for the sake of you guys. So, and I hope you are going to, you know, join these three steps. You follow this step, three steps, you can submit anything, anything, living and non-living below the sky. So the first step, how many bits it took to get the number of networks or hosts? How many bits it took to get the number of networks of hosts? Which means say we are going to get some bits. The second step, you can either reserve or you borrow. So reserve stock borrow bits in subnet mask and find your increment. The last step, use that increment to find your network ranges. These steps will take you very far away. They'll take you, they'll take you very, very far. Hmm. It's the reason why I'm giving you time to write them down. But the ones we do, and, and, and by the way, from here, we are just going to work out examples. Pick an example, work it out with the three steps. By the time you have done two, three examples, you won't even need to master these steps. You won't even need to write them. They'll just be flowing by themselves. So we need to start now. We need to start. We have, have, uh, we have enough time to study some examples. This is the only chapter that is studied in two days. We're going to study today and tomorrow. Same chapter. Same chapter. Because in your mamaya, this is this is the most important, very incredible part of CCNA. Like I told you, 70% of the industrial exam subnetted. They bring it in very indirect way, but they need you to have the knowledge of this one. So like I said, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Very important here. Very, very important. So if you're ready, then I am ready. So we're going to start. Yes. Before in the, in the class of my mm. the, in the first class, mm. I was saying the, the total need was 128. What is the meaning of what is all that? What does that mean? The total? The total need was uh. 128. Then they received the host. The total need was just 128. Mm -hmm. Then the total need was uh, plus, plus B uh. was 16. Oh, so. slash 8, slash subnet mask. Those were subnet mask. Okay. For class A or slash 8. Leave that one. Uh. We will say the total need was Class A to Oh, that is for IPv6. It's the total number of bits, 128. In IPv4, 32. Exactly. You first, okay. Something I said. You first go back to the other, or you know, you don't go back to the other slide. Uh -huh. Just go back to the class. The class one we studied today. Class, class, yeah, today. Class of IP address. Just go back there. Oh, the three classes. Yeah. There was slash 8, slash 16, slash uh, 24. Let's go back to the other class, please. Where, where the, the classes of IP addresses? The classes of IP addresses. Class A, uh, class, class B, B class, class C. C. Right. Uh -huh. There is a, where did, uh, there is there's something you said to the total the total networks uh -huh. for class class A. Uh -huh. It was one twenty eight. Uh -huh. And the total uh -huh. the, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the total uh -huh. of class B. You saw it, but I didn't say it. I remain very silent. I saw it, but you didn't say anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything at all. I may mean, saw it. I know you saw it. Mm. And I I I I you didn't say anything. I remained silent deliberately because I knew it will confuse you. So I will mention it at some point. So yes. This one I know I know them like the back of my fingertips. Yeah. Very well. Yeah. Yeah. I've always tried to be so good at what I do so that when you wake me up in the middle of the night. I can talk about this. This is like my, it's like my Quran. This is my Bible. I get it. It's, it's my stuff, man. Yeah. Last year, I was created the top instructor in the whole of Africa last year, and I got an award for it. And Kenyatta University was awarded the, the, the first institution for it. Yeah. And it's because of the, you know, the job that we do here. 
The other second instructor was also from KU. Was also from KU. Yeah. So um, with a lot of humility, we just do the best we can do for you guys to get the skills. Okay. Yes. Yeah, when they tell us we we top the list, uh, we feel so humbled, but we feel so good for our students because we know that the students that Kenyatta University has entrusted in our hands, we we are doing a good job with them. Yeah. And we want you to be good people. We will give you, I will tell you everything I know so that when you go outside there, you do exactly how I do it. And I make a photocopy of me in you. And that's what I want you guys to do. So, yeah. We are so humble as KU, but you know, we thank we thank the Almighty. Anyway, so we've written those down, isn't it? Now let's start. We just we're just going to start with the first example. But before I start with the first example, I need to we are going to use two formulas. So yes, and they are not very complex formulas, but you need to know them. The first formula, and by the way, the second step, the ones you've written down, eh? It says, like, reserve or borrow bits from the subnet match and find. Sorry, just read it again. And find no, read for me the first one. The first one? Yeah. How many bits it took? How many bits it took to get the number of networks, networks or host? Now, that's where I want to start. In subnetting, you are either given a network address by the ISP, okay? And you want to subdivide it to get other network addresses. To give to your other departments or for you to give to main campus, city campus, like that. Okay. So you'll either be getting networks or you'll be getting IP addresses in one network, which we call it hosts. But the, the word hosts or IP addresses is going to be used synonymously. Okay. So we are either going to get the number of host addresses, which are just IP addresses that can be assigned to devices, or we're going to get the number of networks. So that is all this formula. Like the first formula which is 2 power n minus 2. 2 power n minus 2. It's used for calculating the number of hosts, the number of usable host addresses in one network. OK? So that 2 power n, OK? 2 power n minus 2. It means we are going to minus some two addresses to get only the ones that are usable, okay? Are we together? And I'm going to show you which ones to minus. But I want you to note this. Before I finish talking about that, you are either going to, if you read a uh, step, which step says it is stroke borrow? Step two, isn't it? Which means we are either going to reserve or we are going to borrow? To borrow. Those two are very crucial for the part we are beginning to study now. We'll either borrow or we reserve, and I will show you how to do that. Now, something first to note, I'm, and I'm going to ask you. When you are getting hosts, when you're going to, going to get hosts, you're going to reserve bits. And you, I need, I, I hope you note know, know that somewhere. When you're going to, because I'm going to ask you, when you're calculating number of hosts, you're going to reserve bits. So in calculating hosts, you reserve, you reserve. In calculating networks or subnets, you're now going to borrow. So to get networks or, or, or subnets, you borrow. To get hosts, you reserve. That one? Good. Please note that down. Because I'm going to ask you in a few. So let me now go to the formula, two power n minus two. The n there is actually the number of bits reserved because two power n minus two is for calculating number of usable hosts, okay? So two power n minus two, the n is actually the number of bits reserved, okay? So two power n, then after you get, make two power n, we are going to subtract two addresses. These two addresses are addresses that cannot be assigned to any end device. That means they are not usable. The first one is called the network address, which we talked about today. And the other one is called the broadcast address. And that will be asked in the exam. Network address and broadcast address. Those ones, you must remove them from the total number of addresses 
so that you can have usable addresses. Usable means you can assign them to your devices. So good. So two power n minus two, where n is the number of bits preserved, but the two we minus, we minus the network address and the broadcast address. So good. The last formula, two power n. Two power n is when you are calculating the number of subnets or networks. Where the n is the number of bits borrowed. Two power n. N will be the number of bits bo borrowed. Are we together up to there? But don't worry, I'm going to repeat all that. Right now, we are just going to straight away to start. And to start us off, the first example is here. There's so much of my handwriting here. The first example is here. And the question is at the bottom here. This organization has purchased as class what? Class C. What is the subject class of class C? Slash? 24. Slash 24. Which is 255, 255? 255.0. Zero. Very good. So this organization, by the way, how many routers can you see here? Three routers, isn't it? Can you see three routers? Yes. Very good. So we have the router on the left. Let me just uh, do this. So we have this router, we have this router, and we have this router, isn't it? By the way, when you see the line drawn here, the line between each router and the PC, this line is used to symbolize a switch. So that's a local area network, a LAN. So, and that one PC is representing so many PCs there. Okay? So that is one network. This is another network here. Okay? And this is another network, but there's a network between this router and this router. This is a, a one network, wide area network. There's another wide area network between this router and this router. So one, two, three, four, five. A total of how many networks? How many networks are those? How many networks can you see? Five. Very good, five. The LAN here, the LAN here, the LAN here, the one here, and the one here. So, a total of five networks. By the way, this network is also called a point-to-point -point network. I know where, I, where you will ask me that question. This network is called point-to-point. -point. Point. The part that is broken here, or bent, it shows a distance that we cannot quantify from Nairobi to Mombasa, Nairobi to Kisumu. It's such a long distance, okay? And normally, we don't have any devices in the middle here. This is a wide area network. And the reason why I call it point to point, it point, it connects a router in Kisumu and another router in Nairobi. And there's no devices in between there. So there we only need two addresses, one for the router in Kisumu and one for the router in Nairobi. So that's why I call it point to point. Only two addresses used. Now let's go back to our question. This organization has purchased a class C address, and I want you to write down this address. The address is 216. Dot twenty one dot five dot zero. They have purchased a class C address, which is two sixteen dot twenty one dot five dot zero. Just the address only. Don't be sectorist in my class. Okay? Don't write everything. That's all I'm saying. Two sixteen dot one dot five dot zero, and they would like to use it to subnet to address their network. They would like to use it to address their network. How many networks are there? Five. Five, Cindy. Two of them are one point to point, and three of them are LANs. Okay. So here we have already known that we need how many networks? Five. So we need to divide two sixteen to twenty one to five to zero to get a total of five networks. Sawa? Yes, guys. I'm climbing. I'm climbing from simpler to complex, but it's not going to get so complex. It will be easier. I just want you to see the tricks. And thus, I want you to start with me from the very beginning and see how it goes. Now, I want to remove that. Let me do it in a notepad so that you can see what I'm doing. So, okay? Yes. So, uh, this is my notepad here, and I'm going to increase it in size. So that you guys can see what I'm doing, and and uh, can just increase the font a little bit to let's say 
20. Let me, yeah, 20 I think will be good. Now, listen to this. We need how many networks, guys? Five. Five, very good. So up here, what I can do is give me that IP. 216.21.5.0. Dot, dot uh -huh. Very good. We need to create a five network. Networks. Very good. So the first step, how many bits it took to get the number of, of networks? We need to create five uh, networks. So we need to know five networks will be how many bits. So check this out. 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. Okay? Good. And I'll put them separately here so that you can see them better. So this question requires you to know that uh, up here, 128 is 2 to power? 7. 7. Very good. 64 is 2 to power? 6. 32? 2 to power 5. So, 16? 2 to power 4. 8? 2 to power 3. 4? 2 to power 2. 2 is 2 to power 1. And 1 is 2 to power 0. Those are our powers. Indio? Yes, 2 to power 0 is 1. 2 to power 1 is 2. 2 to power 2, 4. 2 to power 3, 8. 2 to power 4, 16. 2 to power 5, 32. 2 to power 6, 64. 2 to power 7 is 128. So, very good. So if you need to create five networks, check this out. If you need to create five networks, this is what you do. You see our numbers here? These are our magic numbers here. So. So my question is, where can we find five? The numbers are highlighted. Five, it's a part Between which number and which number? Between? Where do we find five, guys? Between? Between four and eight, isn't it? Is that true? See, from four we go to five. From five we go to? Six, seven, there. So between four and eight, there's five, six, seven, and then there's eight, isn't it? Okay? Yes. I want you to follow. I don't want to lose anyone here. No. You must. So, I mean, I'm just, I want you to look at if you are to insert five somewhere on one, two, four, eight. I mean, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, that two, sixty four, one, twenty eight. Eh? If you are to insert five there, where will you place five? You will have to place it somewhere between four and eight, isn't it? Are we together? Now, four is less than five already. Cindy. So if four is less, you take eight. Okay? Are we together? So place that number somewhere. Look which two numbers is it in between. Take the one that is more. Okay? Don't take the one that is less. So we take a eight. And then you ask yourself, eight is two to power what? Three. Two to power? Three. Very good. And that's our answer for here. Three bits. So how many bits it took to get the number of five networks? Yeah? It's three bits. So the power will always be your answer. Are we, get, are we together? Let's do one. Let's do one. Because I want you to get it. Let me, let me do this one. Uh, let me do 100 networks. That one we are going to meet. Uh, no, it's okay. 100 networks. Where do we find 100? Between which two numbers? 64 and 128, isn't it? But 64 is less than 100. Cindy. So we take 128. 128 is 2 to power. So we're going to meet there. 7 bits. Non avenue rise. Single moment. Rise is So that is how you'll be finding your bits every day you are asked. So step one. It's always going to be how many bits. Chukwa number yako, put it in your scale and find the power and you are good to go. Disclaimer. Sometimes you're going to be given a number that is already there. Like I'm telling you, I want to create eight networks. I want to create 
eight networks. How many bits? Every time you are given eight, a number that is available there, okay? Don't be, don't be confused. Don't be tempted, okay? Take the next one. If the number is available, is the number is among 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Just close your eyes and take the next one, okay? Which the reason why- Before that number or after that number? No, it has to be after, okay? When you're going from 1 to 8. If you are, yes, yes, yes. If you are given a number like eight, I want to create here. Check this out. I want to create, let's say I want to create, uh, I want to create eight networks, okay? When you ask yourself, where do we find eight? Five is on eight, isn't it? Which is supposed to be two to power three, isn't it? But don't take two power three. It will create fewer addresses. Let me show you. That happens when you use this formula. Two to power n, then minus two. Remember that formula, the first formula, two power n minus two, okay? Whereby, actually the two will be the bits there. If you take eight networks, eight is two to power three. Eight is two to power three, isn't it? So put, replace here n with three. Two to power three is what? Eight. Then eight minus two, six. Those are not eight networks. That is six networks. That's why an exact number is not going to give you the answer you need. An exact number will always be less by two if you do the calculation. For the especially for the hosts or for the network. So are we together? Yes. So anyway, forget about what I'm saying now because we are going to reach it. Let's talk about our five. We needed to create five networks. Cindy, we put five here. We saw five falls between eight and four. Cindy, five is more than four, so we can't take four. We take a eight, and eight is two to power two to power three is our answer. Because the first question says, how many bits? So three is our bits. Sawa? Good. Let's go to the second step now, which says, reserve or borrow. We are calculating the number of networks. So do we borrow or we reserve? Check, I told you to write it down. We borrow, isn't it? Very good. So here we are not going to use reserve. Because we are talking about networks, we are going to borrow. So borrow bits in the subnet mask and find your increment. We are given an IP of 209, I mean 216.21.5.0, isn't it? But we are told it is class what? Class? Class C, guys. Class C. So class C is which subnet mask? 255, 255.255.0, zero, which is slash what? 24. Very good. Slash 24. So, so you're just given a class and you're supposed to know the subnet mask of that class. Okay. So we have written on that is a subnet mask, which is that 255.255.255.0. So we need to reserve bits on the subnet mask. Our subnet mask is not found in bits. It is found in the decimal. So we have to write it in bits now. So 255 in bits. How many ones? Yeah. yeah, eight one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is the first two five five. Okay, so it's like this. Then the next one will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Cindy, yeah. good. Yeah. Good. Hey, Jennifer, I want you to mute yourself, please. All right, then the third one is how is what? Eight ones, India. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know whether you are following. I'm just writing this two five five into yeah. binary. Yeah. Sawa. Then the last one is zero, which is going to be what? Eight zero, India. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We are told. To Borrow bits on the subnet mask and find increment. So let's start by seeing how do we borrow. By the way, do you remember when I mentioned something today? That in a subnet mask, it also has network portion and host portion. 
The ones are on which portion? Network portion. The post zeros post. are on the host, host portion. Post. Very good. Very good. The zeros are on the host portion. So we want now to borrow. And by the way, when borrowing, you borrow from the host portion, you take to the network portion, which means we are going to just going to borrow zeros and make them one ones. Because network portion must have ones. Host portion must have zeros. So if you, we are going to borrow bits, and which bits are we borrowing? The bits we found in step one. Which were how many bits? Three bits. So see, check how we do this. I'm going to just copy this one and place it here. And I want to borrow. And when borrowing, I borrow the... Thanks, Joseph. I'm going to borrow the, the zeros that are closer to the ones. Okay? So I'll take one, two, three. I make them ones. One, two, three. Like that. I've already borrowed. I've borrowed these first three. These bits here. I've borrowed these ones. And I've changed them to one. Ones. Okay? And if you are very keen, can you see that now? I have more ones now. Which means the network portion is now longer with three bits after borrowing, isn't it? And the host portion has reduced by, by three. So when you're borrowing, you must borrow the immediate zeros and change them to one, to ones. So very good. Now things have changed here. If you want to know things have changed, I want you to see this. This one, is it still 255? Yes. It still is, isn't it? What about this one? 255, isn't it? This one? 255. What about the last one? Yes. What is it? Yeah, 128 plus 64, which is 192, plus 32. So like I said, this one represents 128, this one represents 64, this one represents 32, and this one represents 24. Yes, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So we are going to have here 2, 2, 24. Yes, you must know how we get 2, 24, because we are going to have a new subnet mask, and you can see it now. It's now 192255255255224. And that's why, like I said, you must know which each and every bit represents. Each bit represents each bit represents these people, these guys. Okay? Yes. The first bit represents 128, 64, 32, 16, 8421. Sour. Good. Now we have a new subnet mask. Is that so? So we are told reserve bits on the subnet mask. Have we reserved? Yes. So we have reserved. Then the second part says, and find your increment. And find your increment. Check how we can. Please. Yes. Uh, a minute, please. When we, when we were reserving, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I think there's, there's, you said the zeros are in the host portion. Yes, the zeros are in the host portion. Yeah. Then are we reserving or you you said we were borrowing? Yeah, we have borrowed zeros. We have borrowed three zeros here. And when we borrow them, we change them to ones. And that's why we have three ones here, which we are not having no, initially. Are you borrowing from the host portion or you are you are reserving it? We, no, we borrow from the host portion. When we reach reserving, I will tell you how we do reserving. For now, we borrow zeros and make them ones. That is what is meant by borrowing. Okay. So have you guys seen how we do that? So we have now borrowed and we have a new subnet mask. Our only role remaining in step two is to find the increment. Increment. It is not a fallacy. It's very simple to find the increment. When you find the increment, you look at your new subnet mask, this one. You ask yourself one question. You can see that subnet mask is made of continuous ones and continuous zeros. Cynthia, I want you to look at the last one bit where the ones are ending, that last one bit, which number does it, does it represent in the 128.64.2.16.8.4.2.1? What does it represent? This last one bit here, this one. What does it represent? 32. It represents 32, isn't it? Because the first one is 128.64.32. That one is your increment, 32. Are we together? 
Yes, you must know what those numbers mean because it's going to also help you to find the increment. The increment is that number, the last one bit there. I said, so what does it represent? Is it the first one, is it the second or the third one? Does it represent 128? Does it represent 64? Does it represent 32 or 60 or four? It can be any of them, any of the eight. One young wish or Kabisa, the last one, what does it represent? That is going to give you the increment. Okay? Yeah. So here, our increment, some people will call it a magic number. Some people will call it magic number is equal to 32. Okay? And 32 is in which octet, guys? The increment is in which octet of that subnet mask? Uh, yeah? Yeah, check this out. This is first octet, second octet, third octet. So where fourth, do you find our increment? Fourth octet. On the fourth octet. Now that information is very important because that is the information which octet and which increment is what is going to be used to do the last step now. Because the last step says, use increment to find network Range. ranges, isn't it? So check out how we do that. How do we do that? So now take the network that you are given. Which network are we given? The network address we are given. 216, 21, Five zero. Okay. So we said increment, which is 32, was on the fourth octet. Cynthia, we want to come and add it on the fourth octet of our IP. It is an increment. Increment. Every year you're going to get a salary increment of 10,000. So if your salary this year is 50,000, what will be your salary next year? 60. The other year, 70. It is increasing. With that, with the ten thousand, isn't it? For our case, it's going to be increasing with thirty-two, but on the fourth octet, octet, because our increment was from the fourth octet of the subnet mask. How do we do this? We do this this way. So I take this one, put it here, and I put here zero plus thirty-two. Thirty-two, sorry. Zero plus thirty-two is thirty-two. 32 plus 32? 64. 64. Very good. 64 plus 32? 96. 96 plus 32? 128. 128 plus 32? 160. Let's stop it there. 160. Okay. This is how the increment is working. But we are supposed to find network. You know, a range starts from somewhere and ends somewhere, isn't it? Good. Ah, check this out. Check another magic. Check this out. This is something I want you guys to check. Ah, check this out. Now, the first network is 5.0 here. Cindy. Yeah? The second network is 5.32. The first one was dot zero. The second one is 30. The first one ended where? If the second one, one, yes, if the first one started at zero, went somewhere, but the second one came to start at 32, it means the first one ended at? 31. Very good. It ended at 31 here. Give me. The second one started at 32, but the third one is beginning at 64. This other one ended at? 63. Perfect. Give me the, this one, 96. This one ended up 95. Good. 128. This one ended at 127. 127. Yes. 160. This one ended at 59. How many networks are these ones? This one's here. Five. These are five, isn't it? And how many did we need? The diagram, the topology at five networks, isn't it? That's it. So check this out, check this out. 
let's let's work with the first one. Can you see that first one? The first network, which is the first range, which we, we are actually going to, we're going to, we can give it to any of this network. Like the first range, we can give it to this net LAN here, the second range to this LAN, the third range to this LAN, the fourth one to this one, and the fifth one to this one here. But check this out, check this out. Let's talk about the first range, the one I have highlighted. And I can zoom it in a bit so that you can see it. Now the first range is 5.0, isn't it? So that 1.0, it's a minute. All right. So that 2.16.21.5.0, uh, Rufus, I want to put for me there. Ah, otherwise, this guy will go off. Remove the second one. Yeah. 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 I've taught you something new today, isn't it? Yeah. Let's let's see. Let's see. Let's let's. So now, 2.16.2.5.0, okay, is called a network address. You can never assign it to any device because it's the mother of all the addresses. It is the one we were calculating using the ending process. You remember? Yes. You can never assign 5.0. The same way you can never assign 5.32, 5.64, 5.96, 5.128. Those ones are called network addresses. The same way. You can never sign in the first, the, what I've highlighted, you can never sign 5.31, which is called a broadcast address. 5.63 broadcast, 5.95 broadcast, 5.127 broadcast, 5.159 broadcast. Do you remember 2 power n minus 2? Eh? You minus the network address and the broadcast address to get the usable addresses. Check this out. If 5.0 is not assignable to any device, well, which one do we start assigning? 5.1. So the first usable IP address is 216.25.1.1. Second usable is 5.2. Third usable is 5.3. Tell me this. Last usable. Dot. 5.30. 5.30 is the last usable address because we cannot assign 5.31. So, second last usable. 29, isn't it? 29. Very good. Very good. Ah, yeah. Let's do the same with the second range. Second range is the one 5.32, all the way to 5.63, isn't it? So, 32 cannot be assigned because it's a network address. Okay. What is the first usable address? 33, isn't it? Second usable, 34, isn't it? Third usable, 35, isn't it? What is our broadcast address of the second range? 63 broadcast, we can't assign it. Very good. Last usable, 62, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go to the last range, the one that 5.128, all the way to 5.159. Broadcast address? 159, isn't it? Last usable? 158. Second last usable? 157. Network address? 128. Okay? Network address are all these ones. The ones here. All these ones are network addresses. Okay. Yes. So if 128 is the network address, what is the first usable address? Eh? 129, because 128 you can't assign it. Second usable? Second usable? 130. None of you. That is very, very important. So now we are finished subnetting that one. Can we take another example? Isn't it? Because here we're just learning through examples. So let's check this example. So the second example is here. There's a gentleman. 
they have just turned down these things. Same diagram, but they say this organization has purchased a class C address, the same class C, sour, and the address is the same 216.21.5.0. All right. And they would like to use it to create networks of 30 hosts, 30 hosts each. This time around, we know we are not calculating networks. We are calculating hosts, even if the networks are five. But then when you're given networks and hosts, forget about the networks, go for the hosts. So, yes, this time around, they are very specific. It is hosts. And so, we'll modify what we did here just a little bit. Instead of five networks, we are now collect, getting what? Perfect. Hosts, and it is 30, isn't it? Now, the formula remains the same. Uh, so let's see this. Let's start with step, step one. Of course, I remove the three. 30, where do we find 30 here, guys? 16. Between 16 and 32, isn't it? 16 is live, so we go for? 32, which is 2 to power? Very good. So we need here 5 bits. Is that simple to do? Good. So we are told reserve stock borrow. What do we do now? This time around, we are going to reserve bits because we are working with the hosts. Sour. And by the way, for the better part of your learning and even your exam, they work more with the hosts than networks. Okay? So we'll always be doing a lot of reserving than borrowing. That's why we are learning about reserving. So even the assignment I'm going to give you today is on reserving. All right, let's reserve. So how do we reserve? It is class C, isn't it? The subnet mask is the same. Slash 24, 255, 255, 255.0, isn't it? Which is right here. Which is right here. And so what we do is that we want to reserve. Now, listen, check how we reserve, guys. Check how we reserve. When you want to reserve, now you start from right coming to left. I always ask this question to relate it to, you know, what happens. You have visitors at home, all right? Five visitors are coming at home. You have some chairs in the house and there are children in the house. There are parents as well. But the children have a way of, you know, normally disarranging things. They want to jump from one chair to chair, isn't it? You tell the children, we are having five visitors today. And so you tell them, so these five chairs, we are not going to need anyone to sit on them. Okay? We are not going to use them, isn't it? Because how many visitors are coming? Five visitors. So the, vis the, the five chairs must remain untouched. Sour, so, are we together? You can use any other chair, but not these five. All right? Check this out what we do. In reserving, we reserve from the end. So we calculate one, two, three, four, five. Those five zeros must be reserved, no touching them. Okay? The rest of the zeros, convert them to ones. So it is going to be the same thing, but done in different way. This time around, we are not borrowed three bits. No. It is just a coincidence that what we have reserved here happens to look like we borrowed three, but it's not the case, isn't it? We just reserved five zeros and left them the way they are, and decided to change everything else to one to once. And we have ended up in the same place where we were, isn't it? Okay? We're going to do a different one. We'll see how it works out. So, so from here, everything else is the same. Remember, increment is remained the same. The last one bit on the subnet, the new subnet mask. Is still what? Is still what? 32. Cynthia, Cindy 32. Yes. And we are going to add it on the same network on the and it is on the fourth octet, Cynthia. So we are going to add it on the fourth octet of our IP. Our IP was 216.215.0. So 0 plus 32, 32 plus 32, 64 plus 32, 96 plus 32, 128. 128 plus it's 160. By the way, someone can be asking me, why did you put this 160 and we are not using it? Because the 160 there. It is the one that helps us to get 159. You see that? If you didn't have 160, you could not get 159. So, so we have ended up with the same ranges, eh? which is still okay. 
Now I want us to do something with a different range. Yeah. yeah. So the, off to our second, third example now. Guys, this is our third example. This organi organization has both class. You're not gonna able to see it. It should be class. Let me lower it a little bit. I know people online are seeing it. You guys are not. This organization has purchased class B network. And it is which network? Read it. Network there. On 50 dot. Dot five, zero to zero. Public or private? Public. That's public, isn't it? And that's how the ISP gives you the IP. So it's a public IP, 150.5 zero to zero. They would like to use it to create what? What do we need? We need 100 networks, isn't it? We need 100 networks. And so our steps here remain the same. So, um, hmm. So we can do that very fast using our very own example here. So the IP here, give me the IP. 150, 5, 0 to 0. It is class what? Class B. Class B. Slash 16. Yeah, class B, which is equivalent to slash 16, which is equivalent to 2. Five, five. Zero, zero. Good. All right. So we start. Remember, we need to create. What do you need to create? Should be class. Oh, this one should be here. Need to replace this one here. Control X and put it here. All right. All right. So this is, we need to create. 100 networks. All right, guys, we are creating 100 networks. I already gave you a clue. We can call them subnets. Good. Where do we find 100? 128, isn't it? So we take 128, which is 2 to power. So we need 7 bits here. That's okay. Very good. All right, then we are dealing with the networks. We borrow with the sub. We but. borrow. We borrow. Very good, isn't it? Good. When we borrow, we take our subnet mask, which was slash 16. Slash 16 must be here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is slash 16. Is that true? Yes, but here must be 0. Here must be 0. So it's 255, 255, 0, 0. Very good. So we have. Borrow. We want to borrow. And you're borrowing how many bits? Seven. Seven bits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which means it should be like this. Is that so? Yeah, and we have need to have these ones to be zeros. So is this how we are borrowed now? We have borrowed seven zeros and made them ones. Cynthia. Is that so? Sir. Yes. We are borrowing in the in which octet? Where no, the zeros are starting. This is our original subnet mask. Okay. Started yes. So we borrow here. One, two, three, four, five, six, so seven. So we resolve, we resolve from where the zeros are From where the zeros are ending. Good. So we have borrowed the seven bits, isn't it? And now our new subnet mask is here, guys. So tell me what this subnet mask is. 255, is that correct? Good. 255? It's correct. Cindia, what about this one? 254. 254. Five, Should be 254. Okay? Because you know the total one is always 255. Cindia, you minus. Th this last zero represents which number? One. So 255 minus one is 254. Cindia, and then here must be zero. Good. Increment, guys. Increment is always the last one bit here. What does it represent? Sure. Yeah. Huh? Should be two, isn't it? Good. Our increment or magic number is two. Which octet? Third octet. Cindy, it's actually on the third octet here. That's why we find it. Cindy, good. 
Then we now go and we find the network ranges. You see the way it is flowing now. So on our network range, what was our address? 150.5.0.0, isn't it? So I want to use it to replace all these ones here. I just use it to replace all these guys here. Uh, here there will be a few complications, but we are going to learn what that is. Right. Uh, Alan? Yes. That equation you gave us, is that the way we determine the number of hosts you can make available based on a subnet mask? Because I was wondering, uh, yeah. <laughs> I tried to do I tried to do a mask of 255.255.255.2.0 and that mm. gave me that two hosts. Am I correct or am I on the wrong track? It only gave you two hosts. It gave me 32 hosts. When I did when I when my subnet mask ended with 250, mm. was it supposed to give me 32 hosts? No, it was supposed to give you. Let me tell you that I, I have the answer to that. Let's say two five five. Let me let me just do this. Let's say we have two five five two five five two five five dot zero. Is that the one you're referring to? No, no, two five five two five five two five five dot two five zero. So the last one is is has a is has a five uh, so two fifty. Uh, so two fifty. Yes, that's supposed to yield thirty two hosts. Am I correct? Nope, you are not correct. You are oh. not correct. We are going oh. to reach. Yeah, it's only when it is two fifty two, dot two fifty, not dot two fifty. Oh, you will, okay. you will never find a subnet mask with dot two fifty. It must so be dot two fifty two. With two fifty two, you get thirty two hosts. You get no, you get exactly two hosts, and we are going to do oh. it in a few. Okay, all right. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's okay. I'll just do one or two, and then I recall it a day. I give you some assignment to do. And tomorrow we can do something else. All right. So check this out, guys. Check this out. There's a bit of confusion here. Let's look at this as our original IP, isn't it? This is our original IP. And uh, let me just increase the font. I want everyone to see. I am so keen. Uh, to what I'm doing that I need. You can see it clearly now, isn't it? Very good. Okay, check this out. Our increment is what? Two. On which octet? Huh? Third or fourth? Third octet, isn't it? And the third octet is actually here, isn't it? Good. So we want to, what is zero plus two, which is the increment? Hey, are you understanding? We are doing two is our increment, so we're going to increase the third octet, only this column here, only the column of the third part with the two. So, zero plus two, two. Two plus two, four plus two, six. Six plus two, eight. Eight plus two, ten. Are we together up to there? Very good. Yes, so finding the network ranges is the most difficult thing right now but I will bring you up to speed. So check this. Check this, check this. I'm gonna put that up a bit. Nineteen plus one. Really, I, I, I used to teach class one primary school. I taught high school. I taught university students mathematics. So sometimes I teach you the formulas for, for primary school students. For you to understand because everyone started from there. So uh, let's add, we are adding 19 plus 1. So uh, we start with 9 plus 1, isn't it? What do we get? We get 10. Mm -hmm. We get 10, isn't it? So we write 10, isn't it? Do we write 10? We write 0, Correct. we carry 1. We cannot yeah. write 10 and bring down the remaining 1. Cindy. Very good. So I'm going to write here 0 and I carry one, 1, which means 
if you have two. What is the next number after two? It's three. Next number after three? Four. What do you do to three to get four? You add one to get the next number, isn't it? And check this. We have added nine. We have added one to get the next number. And what next number have we found here? Yeah. We found it zero. Because we are going to add one up here and we will actually, we will get two. Our answer will be 20. Cynthia. But the next number after nine, we have just added one to get the number and we go to see zero. Which means in decimals, the next number after nine is always zero. After zero, one. After one, one. two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh. eight. After eight, nine. After nine, nine. zero. Zero. It's always going like that. Very good. It's always going like that. In octet, the next number is always Z, zero. One, two, all the way to 250. 250, five, okay? Every octet starts from zero, one, two, three, all the way to 255. Do we have 256? Huh? No. After 255, where do we go to? Zero. We go back to zero, isn't it? So the same way, here we have added one to nine and we have gotten 10. We can't write 10, we write zero because there's no 10 in decimal numbers. We write zero and we carry one to the next one to increase the next one, which is now going to be two because the next number after one is two. Cynthia, now check this out. I want to put down that example and now I want to take here 255. So in 255, I want to add one. Ideally, we are supposed to get, you're supposed to get what? Six. 256, but we don't have 256 in networking, isn't it? After 256, we have what? We have zero, isn't it? Which means if we add one to 255, you are not going to get 256. What do we write there? You're going to get a zero, isn't it? And if you get a zero, we add one to the next one, which is if the next one was zero, it becomes now a, a one. So 255 is the last one. The next one is zero, isn't it? Zero is the last one. I mean, zero is the first one. Which number comes before zero? Before zero. 255. 255. Yes. After 255? Zero. 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 Before zero? 255. 255. Before, before 255? 254. 254. 254. So I want you to get that change over, okay? The 255 is the last one. If you're on 255, no 256. You're going to start from zero, one. Now, check this out. Check this out, guys. This number, this range here, is beginning with two, isn't it? Huh? The previous one ended with number that comes before two. One. It's a tricky business. This number on the second octet, it begins with two, which means the second octet of the previous one began with or ended with what? One, check this out. You have told me this number is beginning with zero. The previous one ended at 255. It's something I want you to take in. It gets very tiring there to the mind, isn't it? Yeah. So the second range on the second octet is beginning at two, which means the previous one ended at one. Then the third, the fourth octet is beginning with zero, which means the other one was full for it to start at zero. And it was full at 255, 255. Check this out. This is beginning at four. This one ended at? Three. Which one comes before three, four? Three. 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 Good. This one is beginning at zero. This one ended at? 255. This is six. Five. If this is zero, what is supposed to be here? Five, five. 
This is eight, beginning at eight. This one ended at seven. This is beginning at zero. This one ended at two, five, five. This one is 10, guys. Here, the third octet should be, should be what? Nine. Nine. This is beginning so, at Alan, zero. Yes. So I'm asking, yes. so does this mean that the range has 510 IPs? I want to tell like, you, uh, let me tell you how the range, how we can, in fact, let me tell you how do you, and that's a very good question that you'll be asking the exam. How do you know how many IPs are in each and every range? Use our formula of two power N minus two. Okay? Where N, okay will be the number of zeros on your new subnet mask. How many zeros do you have on the new subnet mask? Nine, isn't it? Two power nine? Well, it's here. Check this out, and we are going to go beyond here. How do you get, if you have 16, how do you get 32? You double that 16 to get 32. Cynthia, if you double 32, you get? If you double 64, you get? 128, very good. That's how if you double 128, you get two? 256. 256. 256. If you double 256? 512. 512. This is going to be eight. Now, check this out. Uh, hey. There's a problem here. This eight is supposed to be here. And this is supposed to be nine. So two power nine is five twelve. Okay? Two power n minus two. Two power nine is five twelve minus two. Five twelve minus two. Five ten. So these okay. networks, each of them has five ten networks. You use the number of zeros on the new subnet mask. Use those number of zeros. Call them networks or hosts. The number of, so these ones are the networks, network ranges, but we call them host IPs. Host are the addresses. The IP addresses are the host addresses. Eh? So each of these yeah. networks have 510 hosts or host IP addresses. So are we together? This is the only one that was starting. Uh, I know we have six minutes. Let's do maybe just one and then we get going. We are almost done with this. We are just reaching the tip, the tip. Ah, yeah. The second last one is which class, guys? Which class? Class A. So write that class, write the IP 10.0.0.0. We need how many hosts? 500. So write for me the IP and write for me 500 hosts. And we can do that here very, very fast before we get going. So we are creating 500. These are hosts. The IP is uh, 10.0.0. We need to get 500 hosts. It is class what? Class A. Cynthia. Very good. So class A. Class A slash? Eight. Very good. Subject mask will be two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero. Cindy, very good. Ah, yeah. guys, five hundred. Where do you find five hundred? Yeah. By the way, if you are given a bigger number, keep on doubling that number until you get closer to eight. Cindy, we are done the one for five twelve, so it made our work easier. Five hundred. Where does it fall? Nine. What? Between two fifty six and five twelve. Cindy. 256 slash. So we check 512, which is how many bits? Nine bits. Very good. So that's nine bits. And here should be 500. And this is hosts. I think I'm recording this class. I'm going to, you know, yeah. So nine bits. Reserving or borrowing? Very good. We are reserving because it's hosts. So our subnet mask is supposed to be like this. this is going to be zero. Uh, okay, check this out. Check this out, guys. So we now have, this is our subject mask, which is 255 to 0 to 0 to 0. We want to reserve nine bits. We start counting from the end. So 
because we have to leave them. Those chairs, remember, when you hear about reserving, remember my chairs should be left untouched. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Untouched. Change everything else to once. Sour? Okay? Yes. And it's going to be exactly like this. Cindy? Yes, it's going to be exactly like that. Which means the increment is the same. Is the increment two? On which octet? Third octet. Cindy? And if it's two, we are still going to add it. Zero plus two is two. Two plus two is four. Four plus two is six. Six plus two is eight. Eight plus two is ten. Cindy? If this is beginning at two, this one will end at one. One on the third octet. This is zero. This will end at two, five, five. Cindy? Yeah. That's how we got it. Let's do the last question and then we go home. The very last one. The very last question. The ranges are going to be the same. Let's do the very last question. Uh, and the last question is here. Now, this is when you need to, I need to do your maximum attention now. Look up if you have not been looking up. We are going to do the same thing and twist only one thing. This is what comes in your exam. This one is the one you'll find in your exam. Now, you realize all the other networks, even the one we have just done. Each network was having 510, 510, 510 hosts, isn't it? Remember, do you remember the network I called point to point? How many IPs does it need? Two. Exactly two. Imagine giving 510 to a network that costs only two. You waste how many? 508. That is unheard of. So what we are doing here, which is called VLSM, variable, variable length of net masking. Don't give everyone equal number of addresses. We only give you according to how many you need. Okay? And we pay attention to 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. If you need 30 hosts, which number is closer to 30? 32. We give you 32. You list only how many? We need two. Sure. Good. If you need 60, we can't give you 512. We give you 64. Yes. You waste very few. Okay? And but everything else remains the same. Let's do this thing at the last thing. So it's read subnet mask that we are given 192.168. We write it down 192.168.1.0 slash 24. And here we will not use the class anymore. You will be given the subnet mask now. So, so we are given the subnet mask. The network is 192.168.1.0. It is slash 24. We want to use it. And this is how they call it in the exam. They'll never call it a VLSM. They'll say, Use the most efficient addressing possible. That's what they'll tell you. Because without wasting, in fact, they'll say, subnet it, wasting the fewest number of addresses. Or they say, use the most efficient addressing po possible. Let's see how we do that. Here you'll be given the number of users for each and every network. If you check here, the network on the left requires how many? Sorry. The network on the left requires 20 users. Cindy, on the right also requires 20. This one require 60. How many are here? Point to point. Oh. Exactly two. Here, two. Here, two. So we have six networks. Three of them require two, two, two. We call them point to point networks. One of them, two of them require 20, 20. The, the net last one requires 60. Okay? So can you see how we do the submitting? This is the last one. Rule number one. In fact, it is only one rule. Start with the largest number. Which is the largest number here? 60. Then we go to 20, 20. Then we go to 2, 2, 2. And we are done. So if you have mastered that, let me get my, let me get my notepad. The notepad, I started teaching it recently, and I realized it's much better, much better. Give me the network, guys. 192 to 168, 1.0. Cindy, it is slash? 24. Slash 24. Perfect. And this one only requires hosts only, okay? So the first network, we're going to create how many hosts? 
We start with the largest, which is 60. Slash 24. So we are no longer going to use this concept of classes now. We are just going, sorry, sorry. We are just, oh my God. We are just going to use uh, our subnet math, which is 255 and 255. That's our subnet mask. Now, check this out very, very keenly. Now, I want to be tempted. I want to remove these steps now because we already know them now. Cindy, allow me to remove them in this particular one here. I'm going to remove, we are going to do it from offhand. So, because I'm going to, I'm not going to require you to, to be cramming these steps. No. So I'll remove them. And I'll remove the third one here as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, put here our st first task and I'll put it here <laughs> and I'm going to move the powers as well because now you know them our first or I can no I'm going to remove them because I want you guys to be learning so the first task is to create 60 hosts per network so now what we always get is the bits, the first one, Cindy. And we are dealing with 60. 60, where does 60 fall here? Eh? 32 and 64. 32 and 64. 64. We take 64. Cindy, which is 2 to power? 7. Uh, 7. 2 to power 6. 2 to power 6. 2 to power 7 is 128. Eh? Remember, <laughs> I know where it's getting. Remember, 2 power 0 is 1. 2 power 1 is 2. 2 power 2 is 4. 2 power 3 is 8. 2 power 4, 16. 2 power 5 is 32. 2 power 6 is 64. And that is the other thing I want you to mark. Know your powers. Sour? Good. Okay. So 2 power 6, which is 64. Cindy, so we need 6 bits. If we need 6 bits to create, these ones are supposed to be 60. Host. Are we reserving or borrowing? Yeah. We are reserving. Very good. So our subnet mask is here. 255. Five. This should be much faster, 255. And so it's, this is our subnet mask, slash 24. So we need to reserve. And of course, it's supposed to be like this. Let me just copy. This is not part helps me to do a good job. Uh, is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This zero is not supposed to be here. Uh, so it's supposed to be like that. Cindy. So we are receiving how many bits? Six bits. So check this out. One, two, three, four, five, six. We receive them. Okay. Leave them the way they are. And the rest should be one. Should be one. So these two will be ones. And this one should also be one. So have we received now? Okay. What's our new subnet mask? It should be dot what? Huh? 192. Good, 192. Okay. Check this out. What is our increment, guys? Huh? Very good, 64. The increment or magic number is 64. I remove this magic number thing. 64. Which octet? Very good, fourth. Fourth octet. Aya. So we go straight to our, so something is gonna change here. So I'm gonna remove all these ones here. Oh my God. So I remove all these ones. So this is the only thing that is changing. In this case, the increment is added once. That is the only thing I've changed, okay? Because each range is going to for a different network. We don't want to create networks of the same. If you add the same the same increment all over, it means you're creating networks of the same number of IPs, okay? So the first one, increment is our increment is 64, and it's on the fourth octet. Our IP is supposed to be 192.168.1.0. Cindy, good. So I take this, put it here. So my fourth octet here, has a zero. Cindy? Eh? Zero times 60 plus 64? 64. 64. Full stop. This network is 
beginning at 64. This one ended at? Ended at? Five. Yeah. If this one is starting, the previous one ended at? 63, very good. 63. Cindy, this slash, no, look at this subnet mask. It is 255.255.192. Cindy, this one is slash, the number of ones, how many? Always remember up to here, there are 24. So we just added two more here. 20, we put a slash 26, slash 26. And you should know that your subnet mask will end with dot 192. Okay, I'm putting that just for you to remember that. Okay, from there, we are done with that. Add the increment only one, once. Go back to your topology. After 60, the next number was? Yeah? After 60. Check this. We had 60. The next, next number is? 20. 20 host. Cindy, good. We go up here. We now say, we put here 20. Not much ado. 20. Where does 20 fall here? Mm, 32. 32. Cindy, 32 is 2 to power? Huh? 2 to power 5. Very good. Which means we need 5 bits. Okay? Subnet mask remains the same. Okay? So we need to reserve 5 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Quisha. The remaining 3 zeros should be 1s. So this is going to be one. So what is new subnet mask? This one will be what? On the new subnet mask part here? Very good, 224. What's our increment? That's two, very good. Which octet? Fourth octet. Now you take that 32, you now add it on the fourth octet here. What is 64 plus 32? Eh? 96. 96. Good. If this is beginning at 96, this one ended at 95. Very good. Subnet mask is now slash 27. Just count the ones here. So 27. It will be ending with the dot what? 224. Sit up. How many networks of 20 did we have? Two. Two. There's one this side and the other is also 20. Which means you are going to follow the same process, Cindy, which is the same as because the bits will be the same, increment will be the same, the number being reserved will be the same. At the end of the day, we'll still just take 32. We had to, what is 32 plus 96? One, 128. Okay. All right. Okay. Check this out. If this is beginning at 128, this one ended at 27, which means slash is going to be the same, slash 27, which is still beginning at 224. Cindy, we are done with the networks of 2020. Cindy, now we go to 222. So we have three of them, Cindy. And this is where it gets a bit tricky. Check this out. We need to create two hosts here. Two hosts. Check this out and borrow from knowledge. I told you if you where does two fall here? Sure. Eh? Sure. We cannot take two. So we have to take four. four. So do you know what happens when you take two? Because two is always two to power one. See here. Two always is two to power one. So n is equal to one. Okay. So what is two to power n? I mean, two to power one, two. Two minus two, we're getting zero hosts. That's why you always take the next one. So, so we cannot take two. We take four, which is two to power two. two. So we are going to need here two hosts, two bits. Eh? So reserving two bits, one, two. So, which means this one should be one, one, one. So we only need two bits. So, so increment, guys. Hey, hey, hey. This one represents? Oh. The first zero represents 
one. one. The second zero here, sure. two. two. The third bit, four. four. So, so our increment here is four. Good. four. Subnet mask is actually the last subnet mask, if you can remember. It ends with two. You can just say one plus two is three. Three from 255, 252. So this is the last subnet mask. So 252, which is on the fourth octet. Cindio, increment is, we have said is four. Cindio, so we are going to add it how many times? Because we have three networks that need 222. Cindio, so we add increment, which is four. What is 128 plus four? Huh? 132. Okay. This is ending at one beginning at 132. This one ended at 131. Very good. This is slash, guys. The last slash. A. If all of them are ones, they are 32. Minus 2. This is supposed to be slash 30. We add then for the next two. We add again the increment. 132 plus 2. Yeah. One one thirty two plus four. One thirty six. If this is starting at one thirty six, this one ended at one thirty five. Okay. The slash is the same. Slash is thus thirty. And by the way, it is dot two fifty two. The same thing as this one. Dot two fifty two. We are there for the last network of two. Okay. 136 plus two plus four, sorry. 140. Let's get this range here. This is ending beginning at 140. This one ended at 139. It's also going to be slash 30. Dot 252. It's done. We are done. We are really done. Okay. You can get the first usable from here. Cynthia, can you? Are you able to get the first usable of each range? Because I taught you. What is the first usable here? 1.1. Cynthia, because 1.0 is a network address. Eh? What's the last usable here? 60? 62. Cynthia, because 63 is a what? Broadcast. If you say 64, 64 is the network address for the second network. So, so I'm going to give you an assignment. We are going to calculate subnet mask, and you are going to also configure them in a device. Or maybe today I'll just give you the one for doing. We don't configure. We will configure them on. A, we'll configure them tomorrow. Now. So let me give you the assignment. The assignment is uh, very simple. I'll, and I'll give you some, I think some I'll give you in the group. OK, this is my assignment. And I'll not give you so many of them. I'll give you very few. I'll give you very, very few assignments. OK, this is a, my first assignment. This is my first assignment. Okay, first assignment. Uh, use network. Use network. Or I'll just do it like this. I think I'll just make it simpler. Create 100 networks. Create 100 networks. I can zoom it in. Yeah, create 100 networks using 172.16.0.0.16. That's the first assignment. The second assignment is here. Create a thousand subnets by using that network. Okay. The fourth assignment, create 300 subnets. Create 300 subnets. So the third question, eh? You create 300 subnets. Leave this, this, leave this one alone. Create 300 subnets. Create 300 subnets by using network. Network this one. Create 300 subnets by using network 10 to 0 to 0 slash 8. 
Okay. The second one is 1000. The second one is get 1000 subnet using the same network here. The third one, create 300 subnets using the same network, 10 to 0, 0 slash 8. Okay, that's the third one. The fourth one, now you create this one, 20,000 hosts. By the way, when you're getting the ranges, just get four or five ranges is enough. Okay, yes, four or five ranges is enough. So create 20,000 hosts networks of 20,000 hosts uh, each using the same network here. 20,000, create 20,000. Yes, create 20,000. Can, can this be shared through WhatsApp also? Yes, we, I will share this document through WhatsApp. Yes, create 20,000 okay. hosts of using the same network. And uh, my last question for today, it's here. My last question of today, it's here. Subnet this network, 172.16.00.23, and create one network, 200 host, 100 host, 50 host, 25 host, 10 host. You remember that point to point? The previous example we did was having three networks that needed two, two, two. Cindy, here you're going to create four point to point networks that have two hosts each, okay? I will share this in the group. Eh? I know writing it is, uh, I understand, understand. So this is my last question for you, okay? I'm going through this document in the group. This document also has two questions. They might, you might find them very challenging because it is how they set the, in the exam, they set a question that you should answer in two minutes. Like number 17, I'll put it in the group, so the document. Eh? Number 17, you can try it, but we'll work on it. Uh, some other time, and also it's number number ten. Number ten. This question is also an exam question. You answer it in two minutes. We we'll look at it. So I'll throw this in the group, but work on only those few that I've noted. There are only I think there are six. Okay. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday, isn't it? Tomorrow I want us to. Um, we'll be having a lab. Lab with equipment tomorrow so that I'll give you guys an off on Friday. Is that okay? So, yes, I'll give you an off yeah, yeah. on Friday so that you can be able to work on those other assignments. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah, so that um, I know you didn't celebrate Valentine's Day. You can celebrate it on Friday, so whatever it is. I mean, I'm kidding. But Friday, we can take a day off to work on some of these things. So tomorrow, let's come. We do the lab. Once we do the lab, then we can now do subnetting. And I can give you even some other real exam questions, questions that came in the exam last week on Saturday, industrial exam, because I have to connect you with reality. So, otherwise, guys, I think that's the end of this class uh, for today. I'm now going to stop this recording, and uh, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Sir. Yes.